Today, actress Jennifer Taylor joins me for a very important conversation about fear, all right here at her home in Los Angeles, California. Let's go, journey with me into Jennifer's third act. Jennifer Taylor, thank you so much for joining me on the third act. This is such a special thing to have you here today. We are talking about fear. We are gonna unpack this very, very special topic that a lot of people need encouragement from. I wanna read from uh, the Bible, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. This verse is so special because so often fear is in our own minds. It's in our head. It's something that controls us. It's something that overwhelms us. And really a lot of it is about mind over matter, but really aligning ourselves with God's will, with God's love so that there's no, you know, there's no room for fear. I, one of the, my favorite things that um, someone said to me is that a soul turned over to Christ should be full of his hope and love, that there's no room for fear. And I, so wholeheartedly believe that. And if you look, if you trace back to every problem, it comes back to fear. And God often uses that uh, to be able to work in us because it becomes this vicious cycle where, where that fear controls us. We try to control other people. We try to control, you know, the problems and, and it just becomes this vicious cycle. And I wanted to know, how do you in your own life rebuke fear? Has there been a time where fear threatened to overwhelm you and how did you overcome that? Um, daily, yeah. it does. Sometimes minute by minute. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever seen Avengers. It's yes! Probably, you know, well, I love it. Bruce Banner, mm -hmm. um, he responds to you know uh, Iron Man because mm -hmm. he said, how do you keep a, a lid on it? Meaning him turning into Hulk. Yes. And he's like, the, the secret is, is I'm angry all the time. Mm. I'm fearful all the time, mm. um, but I don't take that as in a bad way anymore. I know that I can't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. I need to continually go to him. Mm -hmm. um, I need to go to him. Uh, when I think about my kids, I can think about a million things that uh, make me fearful. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, career. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many things in life that I, if left to my own defenses, I am I am fearful. Sure. So I, I have to just know I'm fearful all the time and I have to continue mm -hmm. going to him. I, I think that it's not, a, it's not a coincidence that he mentions fear so many times. So many times. Do you feel like oftentimes we fixate on these fears? I mean, most of the time our fears, I mean, not even most of that time, I would say, I would say the majority of the time our fears don't even come into fruition. No, that's like you live a thousand deaths in your own mind. Yeah. Um, I think that if you, like, if I, it's so easy to just let that little seed get in. Mm -hmm. And then if we keep mm -hmm. watering it just to go, like, you can go from zero to 60 super fast right. in the fear department. It's self-imposed crisis, I like to say. It yeah. is. And um, someone else said, uh, they call it a uh, shadow wars. Like, you're, you're having this conversation in your right. head that is, A, probably never going to come to fruition. Sure. Um, so it's just wasting all of that mm. time and energy and, and, and he doesn't want us to feel like that. No. So that's why I think minute by minute, like you, sometimes you just have to take it to him every time. Mm. For me, spending time with God is a lot of time journaling. Um, I love that. I was going to say, what are some tactics you would give people for advice on Because how to handle if it? I'm like ruminating over something over and over again, I'm just going to spin. But if I write it for me, writing something down. Yes, me too. It me too. brings it into focus. Sure. Um, and then also just listening mm. because we're so busy. I know that I'm super busy all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and an overachiever perfectionist. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yes. But to put, to take that time to really listen to, to what he's saying. Right. Do you feel I mean, fear in a nutshell to, for me has been something that's like soul paralysis. It's debilitating. It's mm -hmm. been so overwhelming in my own life because Satan knows exactly what buttons to push. Absolutely. Do you feel like most moments of fear come back to exposing it? I, lo I love this thought that if we just expose the fear, if we are open about the fear, it, yeah. it, it, it cannot grip us. I, I wanna quote Franklin Roosevelt. We've all heard this quote, but it's so relatable. The one thing we must fear is fear itself. Yeah. For if we allow it to, it will control us. If we confront it, we will master it. I love this thought because so often if we just confront 
and, and master ourselves over this fear, it, it cannot it's overwhelm us. It's shining a light on it. Yeah. Um, I, when I was turning 40, I'm an actress in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Preach sister. The <laughs> looking in the mirror is different from at, at 20. Mm -hmm. And you sure. can either go, oh no, I'm not this. And, and that, that just threatened to just engulf. And I was like, yeah, no, I can't. And I wrote this little, just like a short little poem. It was by the grace of God, with all my heart and soul, surrender to my brokenness, I made whole. Mm. Like, you I wrote am, that? Oh, yeah, I'm I like, I it. am aging. Mm -hmm. And just just giving into it, mm. it made it like, okay. Right, and I and think- it didn't matter anymore. Sure, and a lot of people don't realize that as a woman in this industry, we know about all of the Me Too movement. We, we know that things are changing, but as a woman in this industry, yeah. age discrimination is a very yeah. real thing. And, and we are- pushed and in, in backed into corners where yeah. we may not work because we don't we we don't do certain things or we may not Absolutely. look a certain way but but that fear could totally take over sure everything sure. but if uh, if if you, if I didn't like push past and go okay well well what if what is it right but that's not what he he made me to do right well and that's something that I really want to touch on I'm glad you to your point that you brought that up so much of it is about stepping out of that comfort zone. It's so easy to get complacent. We allow fear to control us so much that yeah. it becomes a, an innate part of our DNA. I mean, it becomes yeah. a, something as simple as waking up and breathing because we're so used to that feeling. So for you, can you just give some advice or talk about how you've really leaned into the importance of stepping out, out of your comfort zone to just be yeah. on the counter attack of it? Uh, I mean, I've done it in so, so many areas of my life, right. just from like one, uh, I teach Sunday school once a month at my church. Sure. At first I was like, when they asked me, I'm like, who am I to mm. teach the Bible? Who am I to do mm. that? But I'm like, no, Hey, you're an actress, you perform. And then you have these young kids who, who want to hear that, who yes. need to hear that. So you know, so that's that's one way. Um, I I was at this woman's movement. Uh, it was like a freedom movement. Mm. It was at my church, and it was a whole woman's event. It was amazing. I'm listening to all these stories of this woman, mm -hmm. and I had never heard the Gomer and Hosea story. Uh, uh, Gomer uh, was Hosea's wife. Uh, Hosea was a prophet. Sure. He went, um, God told him to marry this promiscuous woman. Mm. And I heard that story, and I was like, and... I'm like, oh, I need to write a, a movie about this. And and I was like, no, I'm not a, me, I'm not a writer. Sure. I can't do sure. this. I, no. Um, you had fear right there. <laughs> I, fear was just just uh, just singing in my ear. Yeah. And then I was like, well, why not? So I wrote the, I wrote the script. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think just every day, Day. We just mm. have to listen. I, my pastor at church says, listen and follow. Mm. We listen and then we follow. Mm. Because I've done plenty of not following. I'm a control freak. Yes. Um, I know everything. I, or that used to be me. Yeah. And um, I just have to know I'm not in control of sure. anything. You wanted just, to plot your, plot your own course. Yeah, and it doesn't work like that. Right. And it never works out. I'm so glad you just said that because it takes so much courage to be able to say it, it does not work out. Like, trying to do it ourselves does not no. work out. It may work out for a little bit where yeah. you think, great, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. But at the end of the day, you know, being a follower of Christ is that bullseye on your head. So I, I yeah. almost feel like when things are a little bit amok, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm on the right path because Satan is trying hard to knock me off course. And that's, again, leads me to my next point. So often fear is that number one tool that Satan uses to get us distracted, to keep us from making decisions, yeah. to knock us off the right course. And over, you know, overarchingly, it steals our potential. Yeah. And that's something that just, that's enough in itself to make me want to fight so hard against fear because I don't want to lose my potential. I don't want to lose what God has intended for me to do. Yeah. You know, and you talked about this. The Bible has countless, I mean, ver so many verses about do not fear. He cannot be any more specific yeah. with us. Do not fear, yet we fear. <laughs> so could you please just give us some advice or just your um, specific opinion about why we struggle with this? I mean, I know why non-believers do, right? Because they, they don't yeah. have that assurance. But why is it so hard to 
claim these promises of God that he gives us? And just maybe some examples in your own life. Um, I don't know. I, I think part of it, like for me, is um, going back to my controlling, trying mm-hmm. to think I can mm-hmm. control the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I also think is like, if we think of it down the road, like that's a great promise. Mm. I mean, that is a humongous promise. And I think at the end of the day, we're like, why would he promise me that? Why, why do I deserve him to say mm-hmm. I don't, not to fear? Why would he take care of me like that? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that has to do a lot with it because mm-hmm. yes, he's, he's very clear, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's hard. Sometimes though it's hard, but it's almost as easy as just turning the channel. You know, I, I, someone I know. once told me that and, and it stuck with me forever that it's about being able to just switch off from the negativity to what I call the godativity, oh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, and, and, and it is, but we're also stubborn. Yeah, stubborn. I, I mean, I grew up, um, you know, not very religious. I always felt the presence of God. I always really? knew so God. Really? So no, your family was not? They were Catholic. Okay. But we were never, you know, religion wasn't a big thing. And sure. then I kind of went the, not the opposite way, but I was like, I'm a questioner. I still am a That's questioner. great. That's great. So I was just like, no organized religion. I Sure. And then after I had my kids, I I really felt I needed to know God more. And mm-hmm. then, so I'm like skeptical when I'm like mm-hmm. going to church and checking things out. Mm-hmm. And then the deeper I got into like the word and, and people were like, oh, well, there's all these rules. Like, no, those rules give like life they're, they're for freedom yes like they they give life and it's such it's such a more personal and powerful mm. relationship than i ever ever thought was possible yeah um, oh i'm so glad you brought that up because it's it's so true that we look we look at those rules as you know, yeah, as this just wall when really, like you said, it's about freedom and and it's about relinquishing us knowing what's best for ourselves. The the reason why those rules are there is because the Lord knows how much better our life is going to be wired. Yeah. Yeah. Like I look at my own kids, I have certain rules for them. Sure. Not because I don't love them or I want them to, you know, because I can see 10 steps down the road, how this is going to play out. Yes. And I'm trying to keep them safe and give them parameters so that they can grow to be their best. Right. So then I try and think like, oh gosh, God thinks that way for me and he can see everything down the road. Right. Right. And I was just thinking the other day, I'm like, everything that has happened up into my life, Mm. he's been protecting me the entire Mm. way, preparing me for what is coming next. Whatever that is. I love that. And isn't, I mean, really, that's the antithesis to fear is yeah. being able to have that hope and knowing that he is our protector. He's before us, beside us. And I, that's one of my yeah. favorite things. He's with us in everything that we do, but it just comes down to, like you said, us being stubborn. And I love that you mentioned that because we all have it in us. I think if we didn't have a little bit of stubborn in us, it'd be yeah. a little bit of a boring life. You know, like how do you, how do you have that perseverance to per, p- push through things when... You're a little bit stubborn. I'm very much stubborn. <laughs> what advice would you give to people, especially working in the industry? I'm sure you work with a lot of non-believers. Does that, yeah. af- does that affect your career? No. I, well, do you have I, fear about that? Honestly, I don't. No. I, now I have no fear, mm-hmm. um, you know, just about my career. Because I think I literally gave it back to God and he gave it back to me. Sure. Um, so I just think like how I came to coming back around to Jesus and going to church is from a, a friend of mine mm-hmm. who I loved the way she just was with her family, mm. the way she talked about him, but not in a, a judging way. Right. It wasn't like you need to do this. I just like the way she, they, that family lived their life. And so it made me want to, to go more. Look, I, sure. I look at it. I have two commands from God. Mm-hmm. I need to love him and I love to need love people mm. and loving people isn't always easy. Yeah. So those two things keep me way busy enough. Completely occupied. I'm not <laughs> trying to judge anyone. I think a lot of people out there think like, if you're Christian, oh, you believe this and you won't. I'm like, mm-hmm. so I think a lot of times, sometimes when I go on a set and if people find out that I'm Christian, mm-hmm. at first they're, they're like, oh, I don't know how to act. And when yeah. I'm like, just normal, they're mm-hmm. like, oh. Well, if you know what, just me, just being myself mm-hmm. and people knowing I'm a Christian helps people go, oh, well, maybe all Christians aren't 
fill in whatever blank they I have know. there. Well, and that's what's so interesting is that so often people who are non-believers you know they do judge us and they but we're not judging but they think we're judging so it's almost like like you're judging yourself you're judging dude. yourself yeah <laughs> yeah we're not we're not judging you but I, I think it's just a standard of so often people say to me well you're so convicted that it almost comes off as arrogance and it's like well that it's it's not arrogance it's just such a conviction that this is what I believe in you can believe in what you want to believe in but I'm willing yeah. to die for this so that's something that my my belief is my belief so that's helped me a lot with my fear because in this industry I I always worry about what are people going to think of me and you know am I going to be am I going to be judged and all those things that you just explained and it just comes back to really being in line with the Holy Spirit. And again, that quote, just knowing that if his love and his hope are just overflowing, there's no room for that fear and just trusting. You know, if someone comes to you, how do you talk to them about living viably in, in Christ's love? Being able to really, no matter what the circumstances is, you know, mind over matter, just really taking control of your thoughts. And the Bible talks about that, to hold your thoughts captive. So how does that, how is that something that works for you in your that's, walk? That's, I mean, that's hard because my, I'm also, as an introvert, I'm more of a thinker. Oh, you're an introvert. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I am in my head a lot. So my thoughts go all over the place. Sure. Um, and I just have to just now just be more aware of sometimes where they're going. And literally, like, you know, the Bible says he's a, like a breath away from us. So I literally... I've always felt like I've talked to him all the time. Mm -hmm. So when I'm having conversations in sure. my head, I, I'm right praying. Here. I'm sure. like, I'm just always, always like, like, oh God, if I get a good parking spot, thank you. God. Yes. Thank you for that parking spot. Yeah. Or I start, you know, thinking about something that, you know, is going to, you know, make me fearful. I'm like, please just take this away from me. Just. Sure. But you just, you just hit the nail on the head. A lot of, a lot of what will combat fear is praise in terms of praising God for the blessings. I really want to dive into your third act. This show is all about stepping into a moment that has defined you, a moment that you could have shrunk back in fear, but you claimed victory over a certain moment in your life. I would love to know what that third act was. Um, well, I just, I remember it vividly um, because mostly this conversation happened at this table with my husband. Right. Um, it was uh, my son, I had um, Jake. He was just a couple years old. And I've been out here for, you know, how many years? And I was getting a couple of guest stars a year. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and we have no family here. So everybody is like back in Florida, back east. Sure. I'm like, is this enough for me to have my family so far away? Mm. And I was like, and also like just financially living out here for 10 years, not, Los Angeles is expensive. Like we were, um, we were on the verge of losing our house. Mm. And I was just like, and my husband, you know, he's not in the business. Like, why am I doing this to him? So I literally was on the floor in my bedroom just crying and praying. I said, and, and this was at the height of my stubbornness because I sure. knew what career I was going to So he have, hadn't broken down do. those barriers yet. <laughs> no, he hadn't broken them down yet. So he broke them down and I was literally on the floor. I'm like, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Mm. Um, yeah. I said, I will quit this business. I will move back to Florida. I will finish my degree. Mm. I will, I'll do whatever you want, but tell me what to do. And, um, you know, I cried on the floor for a little bit. I got back up and I didn't really hear anything. So I'm like, all right, we're going to put the house on the market. We're going to, I'm going to go back to school. And so I did. I, I put, we put the house on the market, but it wasn't selling. And right here, sitting at this table with my husband, mm. he's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it's not selling. I said, well, I kind of think that God has a plan. There's a reason for it. He's like, I think you're crazy. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I signed up for school to finish. And then seven days later, I got um, the part of Chelsea on Two and a Half Men. Wow. I was like, wow. Okay. I'm listening. So then after that, I really just started digging in deeper at church. I got baptized there. Mm. Um, and then I just kind of everything look this business is not easy sometimes it's up sometimes it's down sure that has not changed sure but I just kind of trust now wherever mm. he's gonna lead me mm. and and I also don't question anymore that I'm 
not supposed to be doing this. Because I used to question, yes. like, am I really supposed to be an actress? What am I? And Which, again, can be that moment. And if you're just constantly divided, you're not yeah. focused on what God's will is for your life. That's so beautiful. So where you say is, you know, the, the point of act, no return. The point yeah. of no return. It wasn't, but it wasn't in the way um, I gave back my career. Hmm. So in a way, I gave up and surrendered it. But um, but then I didn't have any fear about it after that. Oh. So after oh. that, now I'm like, whatever, whatever I'm supposed to do. It doesn't stop me from wanting to do things. Sure. And, um, but I'm like, all right. Or having moments of fear still creep oh. back in because we're human. But it, Absolutely. But there's a peace with it, which is what yeah. most of us really want to acquire is that peace. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. We are going to play a very fun game with you to okay. wrap this up. Rapid fire 15 facts with Jennifer. Pay attention because oh, it might go so fast. It'll be a blur. Yeah. Okay. So I want to get to know you. I want the audience to get to know you. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a rapid fire 15 questions and this like or that. Answer quickly. You will. No, it'd be great. Okay. Inspirational song or inspirational movie? Song. Oh, love it. Psalms or Proverbs? Psalms. Ooh. Modeling or acting? Acting. Uh, New Testament or Old Testament? Mm. I know. That's hard. I know. I know. <gasps> All right. We're, we're going to go new. Okay. But I like the old. No, uh, of course. New Testament. Uh, lipstick or mascara? Uh, mascara. Yes. Me too. Uh, East Coast or West Coast? I know. I know. I know about you really? in Florida. So I had, I had to. People want to know. On <laughs> East Coast or West Coast? You got to pick one. As far as living, I live on the West Coast. Okay, West Coast it is. <laughs> Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Coffee or tea? Caffeine free tea. Perfect. Love it. Radio or podcast? Mm. I know. I know. Audiobook, you know, there's options. <sighs> yeah, I, I do both. Well, a radio. Radio? Okay. When you get in your car, what are you most inclined to do? The radio? Yeah. Okay. Radio it is. Lucky Penny or Rabbit's Foot? Penny. Taco Tuesday or Delivery Pizza Friday? Taco Tuesday. C cruise Control or Lead Foot? Cruise Control. I mean, no, Lead Foot. Lead Foot, I don't yeah. Like cruise control. You live in LA. Come on. You got to be no. able to just get on My the gas. My husband uses Cruise Control and I hate it. <laughs> I love it. Sporting event or concert? Concert. All right. Last concert you went to. I'm quizzing you. Pop quiz. For King and Country. Ooh, good one. Singing or dancing? Ooh. I like to do both, but no one wants to hear me sing. So dance. <laughs> okay. The coup de gras here. Red Vines or Twizzlers? <sighs> or who cares? <laughs> really, who cares? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm actually a peanut butter person, so, but I mean, it's a real debate. Red Vines or Twitters? You got to pick a side. I... Hmm. <laughs> it's so hard. I know. When I'm not eating right, sure. we'll take a handful of each Both. of them. Of course. I'm with you. Thank you so <laughs> much, Jennifer. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, thank pleasure. you. Hug, hugs, hugs, hugs. <laughs> Be brave. Breathe. Look up. Take inventory of your thoughts. Refuse to allow fear to control your mind. With courageous confidence, move forward on the path God has paved for you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Fear only manifests in dark places that need his light. Let God's love be louder than the lies. Today, find ways to meet each moment with joy, laughter, and most of all, love. And remind yourself in every circumstance that perhaps this is the moment for which you have been created. With over 10,000 titles, it would be impossible for us to show you everything on pureflix.com. But let's give it a shot.